if you would, share just a little bit about your experience with uh, FCR and how that made a difference in your church. Well, I think uh, everybody wants, uh, once your church gets larger and has money and wants to do something with a building, everybody that would not give you money now will. Okay, every bank lined up like, we want to do your resident, but it, there are certain numbers that local banks don't want to do with the church world. They, and they shy away from it. Also, they're like, uh, maybe not. And so it was great being with somebody that understood ministry, and I don't know what percent of the portfolio does this, but ministers actually give retirement money towards the fund, and then it gets loaned out to help start churches, and the return goes back to ministers in a portion of the assets. And so that's exciting. And then uh, just being with a lender that understands church growth and understands that if, okay, they understand art churches. If you're an art church and you start a church and it grows, they know you're going to need another phase and another phase. And they're not going to be freaked out by multi-site. Uh, it feels like we call these guys every other month, like, hey, we got an opportunity. Uh, <laughs> what do you think? You know, can we push, can we do that? What do we need now? You know, because we're looking at opportunities with assets and other churches that want us to buy them or merge or whatever. So uh, I like that they don't ever go, no, no, are you kidding me? Are you kidding? You know, like, no, no, no. Uh, and the other thing that they get, they, okay, but full transparency, uh, we're, we're going to like the millions, double digit millions to hold them, okay? And I'm perfectly comfortable with that, okay? But here's the deal. They came and a couple guys flew up and they were doing an interview and they're talking with me and you know, they're getting ready to give millions of dollars to our church in this loan, okay? We owe them the money, but they got a sign on the dotted line. And I said, I know why you guys are here. I said, you're, you're assessing me. I'm your biggest loan risk right now. I am. I said, not if I die, because if I die, the church has a $14 million key man policy on me, okay? If I die, Becca gets a million dollars and promise me she will not remarry for like at least six months. Okay, all right, so that's the deal. But the church gets like $13 million to pay off the debt. So I said, if I die, you're not worried about that. What you're worried about is if we're not solid. If we're not solid and I go sideways, you are not trying to insure my physical heart. You are trying to insure my spiritual heart, okay? So I told him a couple things. I said, first of all, you don't need to interview me right now. You should not interview a senior pastor that has built a church, okay? We can talk to anybody, all right? So don't interview me. Take my wife out to dinner without me being there and judge her. Then take my kids out to dinner and talk with them. And if you take my kids to dinner and my wife to dinner without me being there and you ask them questions and you like what you see, loan me the money. And they're like, that should be our new test, you know? And uh, so here's what I mean by that. If you can get everything in order, your personal finances, your spiritual life, if you can, they're going to understand church and they're going to be able to look at your indicators more than just a bottom line dollar. They're going to be able to look at the health of your church. They're not ignorant. They're not, they're not going to give you the loan to start church growth. They're going to give you the loan because of church growth. 